We're gonna move on now to our Earth Week series, The Power of Us. Heating, cooling, and powering buildings creates more greenhouse gas emissions than anything else in the U.S. And construction and demolition create more than 500 million ton of debris each year. But things can be done differently. Ginger's gonna show us how from Taos, New Mexico. Hey, Ginger. Hey, good morning, George. You know, it's Earth Day, and Earth is showing up and showing out here in the land of enchantment. Look at that sunrise over the Sangre de Cristo Mountains, just gorgeous, as I'm standing in front of an Earth ship. This is a living vessel, not just a home, that's built into the Earth, utilizing geothermal. You know, there's at least one of these in every state, and they've got features all over, like this that looks like stained glass. It's actually upcycled glass bottles from the ones that you and I have drank out of. So the question is, why don't we construct our buildings more like this? Well, we figured, why not live in it and show you how possible it is? This is my routine in the morning. At first glance, Mike Reynolds' morning probably doesn't look much different than many of ours. This water was rain. But he doesn't live in a typical house. He lives in something different. This is an earth ship, a home built into the earth, made from trash, concrete, and dirt. It is fully self-sustaining. I imagine that everybody on the planet can wake up in the morning and be comfortable without fossil fuel. Everybody can grow food in their house, that everybody can have electricity from the sun and wind. These buildings do that. Look closely at the magnificent architecture. It's mostly upcycled trash. That beer bottle there, that's not garbage. That's a glass bottle that will turn into a stained glass brick. They have timers to save energy on hot water. You've got a washer and dryer, all the niceties of you life. you got a washer dryer, you got a cook stove, you got a refrigerator, hot and cold running water. It's just done smarter, like the rainwater used four times. So I'm using five gallons or you know three gallons of water to take a shower. That same three gallons of water waters my banana trees and my tomatoes. That same three gallons of water is recollected to flush the toilet. They have solar, but not for heat or AC. Earth ships heat themselves with used tires. Each tire gets about four or five wheelbarrows of dirt pounded into them. And the sun comes in and it heats that mass. Mm -hmm. And then the tire retains it. And as the temperature in here were to drop, that heat would be released. Mm -hmm. We tested out the tire wall, living in an Earth ship for three days. The house itself is 5,400 square feet and 2,000 of it is dedicated to growing space. And in this house, there's two ponds in the greenhouse mm -hmm. and we have tilapia out there. And then you could catch a fish, pick your citrus, wrap it in a banana leaf and grill it out on the fire. Our earth ship has a wood burning fire, but we did not keep the fire stoked. So we're gonna go for the night without supplemental heat. Good morning. First night down, and I slept pretty well, so I was definitely warm, and I guess that's what counts. An obvious part of living in an earth ship is return things to nature. Leftover coffee going in the compost. But if there had to be one thing from earth ships that we could apply to homes across America, what would be the most important? You can add a greenhouse on the south side of your house and that will heat those rooms that are near that. You can become aware of the fact that heat comes from that thing, and you can catch that heat. Back in New York, I'm taking Mike's advice. I love to garden, but our season in New York is really short. So it's not an earth ship, but there are plenty of these kind of smaller greenhouses that you can invest in and extend your season. Be a little closer to earth. There are more than 100 earth ships near Taos, but Mike says we need more. I mean, the solutions are the way forward on this planet is going to have to be extreme. You can get a base model of an Earthship for about $400,000. That's a two bedroom, two bathroom. And you can also rent them out, which is how we stayed here for three days, two nights. So what are some of the things we could take home? Well, they use decoration as insulation, heavy curtains that traps in heat, kind of like a layered effect throughout the home. Of course, being pesticide free and living with your food is huge. Having the washer and dryer, great, but all that water and the water that comes from your shower which is from rain, that goes into the drains, and then from that drain, 
it comes in through filters to water your plants. The plants then filter it again, and it goes back into the toilet, which is how it flushes. It is the efficiency beyond. And I just think it's so special that you can wake up, pick something, live with Earth instead of against it. And yes, in case anybody was wondering, um, I did get home and my city boy husband was like, come on, tell me, we're not really going to live in an Earth ship. And I thought, well, we're going to start trying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Ben is thinking well, about that. Yes, sure. we, we have definitely learned a lot from this, Ginger, and we all were saying that you probably don't want to come back, because yeah. that, oh. that's right up your alley, but we thank you for bringing that to us, and you can see more of Ginger's Earthship living experience by checking out ABC News Live Prime tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern, and tomorrow, the one simple thing in your kitchen you can replace to cut down on waste and save money. Ginger, I'm tossing it right back to you to give us some weather. What you got? Yes. Hey, and as cold as it is this morning, you know, and as off grid and they use solar for all of the electricity in here, I thought it would be important to see just how much solar has grown on this Earth Day. The states that you see highlighted there are leading. Texas and California are at the top and there are sometimes where solar is powering more than our fossil fuels. So we are making great strides, uh, but we are far from all living in an Earth ship, that is for sure.